I remember with nostalgia the day when I was a monkey. I had so much time. I was enjoying the nature, looking at the beautiful landscape, breathing fresh air, and my mind was so healthy. Later on, I discovered the fire, and that changed my life forever. Believe me or not, I even had a doctor which told me what can I eat and what I can't eat. And I was a little bit of naughty boy and I didn't listen to the doctor. Then I heard the news that a very nasty bug starts to infect the entire population on this planet. I knew I couldn't eat bat, but it was a very bad day. I hunted all day long, and the only thing I did, I managed to hunt a bat. So to be able to survive, I had to eat it. I took the bat at home, and I asked my girlfriend to cook it. She wasn't very happy, as you see in this picture, but in the end, she made a very delicious soup. Funny enough, the bat position in the soup was exactly with the position the girls take in Austrian brothel where the man goes to have an injection so he can have a very wonderful erotic time with a lady on their choice. What can I tell you? The story continues. I survive and I build my first home and then I learn and I build a better home. And after a lot and lot of study, I build a modern home. I discovered the electricity and I start playing with switches. I built a basic circuit just to illuminate one room. I also understood that I can have more or less light. I can have two bulbs and two switches. So if I need more light, I can bring two bulbs on. And if I need less light, I can save energy, bring only one bulb on. Greedy like any other human being, I built a bigger home. It is never enough. I designed the electrical system and I thought my life is complete. I found myself on the top of the stairs thinking about the light. Something wasn't right. Something was just sliding to my fingers. I put the light on and then I went down the stairs. When I reached the bottom of the stairs, I was thinking, how can I, how can I put this light off? Because something didn't make sense. I didn't have a switch onto the ground floor. It didn't took too long and I just realized that if I'll put another switch to the bottom of the stairs and if I'll wire the switch with the switch which is fitted on the top of the stairs, I could uh, manipulate the electricity in a way in which I have the control for that bulb from each switch independently. I did the circuit and I managed to turn the lights on or off either from the top of the stairs or from the bottom of the stairs. That made me, made me happy. Very happy uh, for my achievement. I just uh, packed my tools and uh, I went to work like other couple of billions people on this earth just to feed my family and to survive. Here I did a little bit of game so you can see how these switches are acting against uh, each other so you have a control onto this electrical signal to the bulb. If uh, you will watch this very carefully you don't need further explanation. It will be very easy for you to wire this circuit if you'll ever have problems. That simple circuit wasn't enough for the monkey. Monkey is very curious and want to discover new things. Maniac with brain is very dangerous. So the monkey starts thinking. He realized that he can build a circuit in which all switches should agree before the electricity to reach a bulb or a motor. And the monkey for the first time understood a serious circuit. If you look to the sequence of these switches, you realize that all switches should close the circuit before the bulb to come on. The monkey realized that a uh, serious circuit it is very important when you want to create a safety circuit. 
If you look into this scenario, the monkey discovered that if you'll have two fans and people are working on them, and you have many switches in series for many people that potentially would work on that fan, all the switches should agree before the fans to work. As you'll see now, you have three people working on the fan and then you have only one. Those fan will never work under all the people's down will enable their switches. So all the switches must be on before the fans to turn. That's a safety circuit. So no matter how many people finish their job, if there's only one person that works on the fan, he's got its own switch, its own padlock, its own privilege. Nobody can start the fan. So that guy will not be injured. So the monkey learn about the electrical safety environment. A safety procedure with a safety circuit keeps you alive. Our monkey was very happy with his discovery, but now he looked into the parallel connection. If you look at this circuit, this is a parallel connection. And now you will see how this parallel connection works. And I'll give you an example. If you will uh, open all the circuits, uh, the bulb will go off. But if only one circuit will close, uh, one switch will close the circuit, then the bulb will stay on. So this is a parallel connection in which every switch independently can enable a bulb, but it cannot turn it off if another switch would enable the bulb. What do you think this is good for? Uh, the monkey was thinking, well, I discovered this parallel connection, but how would this help me? What is this for? What kind of application I can go with? And uh, the monkey got an idea. The monkey it is extremely intelligent. He found a way to use this uh, parallel circuit. Can you imagine you're in a building in which you have a lot of uh, commercial offices and each of these offices need independently to hit the office. Now you'll rent the building, but these people need to hit their offices and you don't want to lose unnecessarily energy. Every of these switch have the capability to call for the boiler to run. So the last switch which will be turned off will uh, turn off the boiler and the first switch which will be turned on will turn on the boiler. So they independently. For the boiler to be off, all the switches must be off. Please, uh, I know some of you guys are a little bit in, like, pretty intelligent and you will tell me, okay, but if you will start the boiler from one room, uh, all the rooms will be heated up. And I, I will tell you, no, but it's getting a little bit complicated. I don't want to go there. So that switch will enable the boiler, but in the same time will enable a valve that will allow the heated agent to pass by through the radiator. So when you turn the switch off, you will only cut the um, valve off on your radiator and you will not call for the boiler. So each switch got two function. I will, I have some other videos you can look to, but I'm gonna make a special video for this. But what I want you to understand here, it is the parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit, uh, every switch have the capability to turn on the boiler. But the switch, um, how can I say, if you have uh, six switches, they all have to be off for the boiler to be off. You can turn on the boiler from any switch, but you cannot turn it off if another switch it is on. So it's very important for you to know that all the circuits has to be um, open. Otherwise, each of the switches can override each other and turn on the boiler. That's what you have to know. And if this is unclear from this, you go back to this electrical circuit that I just showed you and uh, look a little bit careful. But this is the application. You have many offices. Each uh, of your customer have the right to hit his premises. You don't need a master room. So each room have the capability to enable the boiler and uh, to hit the room independently of any other rooms. That's all you have to know.
So I hope you understood about these uh, switches and about uh, parallel connection. Now, our monkey, I mean me, uh, it is very thirsty of knowledge and uh, you was uh, restless. You want to discover new ways of uh, designing electrical circuits for the industry. And the monkey figured out that if you work into the industry, you work with a three phase. And this is a kind of safety circuit. You have to turn on first the first uh, isolating switch, and then you have to turn the second isolating switch. Then you have to release the safety push button. And then finally you go to the control switch. And that control switch will enable the motor. No matter how well maintained a system it is, a system always crash. So it can burn, it can be an electrical fault, it can be a mechanical, belts can snap, etc. So the only thing for you to do it is to go to the most appropriate point and to press the safety switch button or to find a way to stop the electrical circuit. It is obvious that you will bring a technician to repair the broken motor. So your technician should be smart enough to apply loto and to put padlock in the isolated switches before he work on an electrical circuit. Why I'm saying this, can't you see on the left hand side top there could be an operator which might not know that you work in a plant room. And he will turn on the machine but the machine will not work because you're smart enough and you turn off the isolating switch, you put the padlock and make sure they cannot be activated. If you fail to do this, if you look to this picture, you can be caught in a deadly carousel of electrical, electromechanical part or you can get an electrical shock or anything else. So please, the life is important. You are not paid enough to take risks. Don't think I'm going to switch off the isolating switches and the people who have their own consciousness not to touch people touch things so if someone will not know that you work into the plant room um, it might activate the motor and you might die now the monkey realized he can do far better things that he did until now he wants to control bigger plants and for this he decides to use a programmable logic control that control doesn't apply only for this, uh, it can be applied for pharmaceutical industries or automotive industry. And let's look a little bit inside a programmable logic control. I'm not going to keep you too much in this area. This is a programmable logic control. What is in a blue rectangle? It is the software inside. That's like a kind of virtual world. You won't be able to see that unless you have a computer which is connected to the programmable logic control. What is outside of this uh, blue rectangle? Uh, they uh, the physical wiring, so you would be able to see them where they go. Normally, they can go into the inputs or they can go from the outputs toward any other devices. As I just told you, you will only see this image, like a box. A lot of control wires goes inside the box and outside the box. So this box has the capability to read data and uh, it's got inside a CPU, a processor, which will act against the, uh, that data according to the software put in by a software engineer. The PLC have many inputs and outputs. You don't have to use them all the time. In my case, I just did a little project and I'm using only three inputs and two outputs. And by the way, if you look into this, you'll see that I'm using only digital inputs and digital output. On the right hand side on the top, you will see the HMI, the human machine interface. And in the lower side, you'll see again the pictures of the PLC. I just want to show you virtually what happened inside. If you look into this in this scenario, you will see on uh, on this uh, lower side that you have a 24 volts VDC. It's a signal that is not reaching the digital input. You have a circuit breaker that is stripped or any other type of malfunction which is not allowing the signal to go to the first digital input. Because of this, if you look into the HMI, you have like a red dot that tells you you have a protected circuit triggered. And if you look into the PLC, you have a NOT gate, 
which um, will uh, which triggers that alarms so that alarm from the plc will be shown onto the hmi but i will speak about how to integrate this later on you will see in a couple of seconds that if you will clear the fault please watch careful the red dot on hmi will disappear so snap you okay you repair the things now you have signal onto the digital input which uh, will send the signal into the digital output that will return that signal into the second digital input guys i'm using this because i'm doing a test i'm not using motors or differential pressure switch i'm using only switches and i give them names if you can imagine i cannot bring like a variable speed driver to my home etc so every switch i give them name one will be start and stop one will be a differential pressure switch so i'm simulating a lot but anyway as I said before, you repair that connection, you do not have a protective circuit uh, tripped. So the first input takes the uh, input, tells you that it's healthy, you stop the alarm and then allows this input to go into the output. The output will return the signal to the start and stop. So now all we have to do it is to start the unit. You will see in a couple of seconds what happens when you start the unit. Just watch very careful. The second digital input will come orange. Tang. And now with orange you have all the blocks that are functional. What you have to observe here somewhere towards the middle into that uh, virtual uh, PLC or in front of you. You have a uh, delay off. That's a time delay off. So just imagine you have a fan and uh, the fan have to take its speed. How does the PLC know that the fan runs? You use a differential pressure switch or a proven switch. So when the fan will run fast, you will create a positive pressure in a duct. And there's a switch which will be activated. And that switch will tell the PLC if the fan works. But because that is not happening instantly, you have a time of delay which will override that switch. And uh, the fan have 10 seconds to reach its pressure. Otherwise, the motor will be turned off on a kind of emergency. If you look now into this HMI on a bar graph on the right hand side, you will see that uh, bar graph where is the DPS is start counting. That's the timer. When uh, the fan should reach the speed before the timer to finish the counting because the switch of the differential pressure switch should override the counter. You don't have to have that glitch in between the counter and the differential pressure switch. And uh, I hope you understood this. So this differential pressure switch, you will see it on the left hand side into the PLC is the last um, digital input should be activated. If you look now carefully, the differential pressure switch uh, finished the counting, it changes color and you see the bar graph finished the counting, but now the signal goes from the differential pressure switch, which means the fan is healthy and it provides enough pressure into the duct, so the DPS read a good data. As long as the fan is healthy and the motor is okay and we have the right pressure, the differential pressure switch will hold that uh, uh, circuit uh, closed. If the differential pressure switch will open the circuit, then the system will go into the alarm and the motor will uh, be hauled off. And uh, this is your circuit. I want you to look quickly to this little uh, picture and you see you have only 10 seconds and then uh, the differential pressure switch will stop counting. And if uh, I'm sorry, the I'm sorry, I do apologize. The time delay will stop counting, and if the differential pressure switch will not override that signal, then uh, the system will go into the alarm. But if you want to learn more about this, uh, you can choose which uh, way you want to go. You can go on uh, Siemens Programmable Logic Control, or you can go on Allen Bradley or Mitsubishi or Omron or any any type of or you can go simple you can go on building management controls Simon data data management comprehensive etc 
So uh, yeah, I can't explain to you very fast uh, how the PLC work in very details. I'm still learning myself, but I just want to share with you a little bit of my uh, monkey world. And um, as I said before, I clearly stated that I do not want advertising from YouTube. I don't want money from YouTube because my brain is not uh, thinking like uh, buying a lot of bricks and to serve the banks for me i want to know what happened to me when i'm dying and what happened to my body how can the atoms live 4.7 billion years and i die on only 80 years and i have a lot of questions about this world so the hmrc tax and banks and all this is the last problem of my life so no matter how smart we are i think we are still monkey or uh, if you look at this picture probably we worse than monkey we consume alcohol and finally i have to say uh, before we used to use uh, the fire for necessity now we're using it for pleasure and that's it so i wish you a very uh, smart wonderful and great new year in which uh, you guys might jump from this ordinary world and go a little bit in the abstract so you might uh, understand better things that you will not understand and uh, and I think this is it. Thank you. Bye.